Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your February 3rd cattle industry headlines, brought to you by Ag Risk Advisors. They provide risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you are concerned about price or weather risk, Ag Risk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, you and I both know there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle. So if you'd like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor today. Also sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within our industry. They also feature award-winning photography in their publication. If you'd like to check out their most recent edition, their February edition, all you got to do is click on the American Beef Producer link above in the caption. That will take you over to their Facebook page where you can check that out. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. And finally, we are sponsored by Lemke Cattle. They're going to be hosting their annual bull sale on February 11th, so that is a week from this Friday at the ranch near near Lawrence, Nebraska. These uh, these bulls are naturally thick, heavy muscled, complete Angus, Red Angus, and Balancer genetics. Uh, they are developed right, guaranteed, and built for profit with over half qualified as top dollar Angus sires while also siring highly maternal, easy keeping females that will keep you in the cow business. Go to Lemke, uh, LemkeCattle.com, DV Auction, or you can go ahead and check them out on Facebook for weekly updates and videos. So on Tuesday, the New York Times came out with a YouTube video titled Meet the People Getting Paid to Kill Our Planet. This video is riddled with misinformation about the ag industry. And I am not advocating for anyone to run over to YouTube and watch this video because as we all know, the more views they get, the worse it is for us. It benefits them. So let's just go over some of the highlights here in this update and we'll cover what it's all about and how uh, terribly misinformed these folks are. The video is an attack on American farmers and ranchers. Basically, it is painting all of us in agriculture as the culprit of uh, the culprit of um, climate change and we're the ones ruining the planet. The video starts off with none other than our good friend, Senator Cory Booker. He says that he is incredibly frustrated that the climate movement here in America doesn't talk enough about food. He goes on to say that you cannot solve the climate problem unless you fix the American and world food system. The video is about 14 minutes long, and during that time, it falsely accuses agriculture of ruining our planet. It starts off by claiming that annual ag emissions are comparable to 143 million cars. Annual ag profits, they are $116 billion, and our industry has very little regulation. All of those statements, completely false. Just by hearing these statements, uh, just by hearing those statements at the beginning of the video, you know right off the bat that these people have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to agriculture. So to get a few facts straight when it comes to the environment and agriculture, according to the EPA, beef cattle are responsible for only 2% of greenhouse gas emissions here in America. When you add in the production of animal feed and other necessary inputs such as fuel and electricity, all beef production is still only 3.7% of greenhouse gas, em- greenhouse gas emissions in our nation. So just a drop in the bucket, very minimal compared to other industries, industries such as electricity. Electricity accounts for 25% of greenhouse gas emissions. Transportation, that accounts for 29% of greenhouse gas emissions here in America. Why aren't they going after either of those industries? The YouTube video states that agriculture takes up an enormous amount of land. What they don't mention is that science has proven that cattle ranches provide various ecosystem benefits like preserving wildlife habitats, defending against invasive plants, mitigating wildfires, and uh, storing carbon. The land that cattle graze here in the United States is crucial for carbon sequestration. Those grazed lands contain approximately 10 to 30 percent of the carbon stored in the soil. The video goes after farmers and ranchers for telling their story, for all of us out here telling how we're sustainable, how we're family oriented, how we produce this, uh, how we produce this wholesome product. They claim that when we're doing that, it's just a myth. It's a lie. It's a sham. That's what they say. But you and I both know that no one else besides farmers and ranchers truly understands the importance of taking care of our land, of producing a wholesome product for consumers. Because when it comes to our land, our land makes us who we are. Why would we ever want to destroy what 
what is our livelihood, essentially. The U.S. beef carbon footprint is 10 to 50 times lower than other regions in the world. Between 1961 and 2019, the U.S. beef industry reduced emissions per pound of beef per pound of beef by more than 40% while also producing more than 60% more beef per animal. Booker ends the video, of course they'd bring him back on. He ends the video by saying that agriculture needs more regulations and it is in everyone's best interest to, to do away with CAFOs. And this is not the first time he has gotten on his soapbox about CAFOs. Um, and it's also not the first time that he's taken a swing at agriculture. And in my opinion, it is incredibly, uh, infuriating that we have such an individual such as Booker on the Senate Ag Committee, a person that has continues to take swings at ag, to continues to destroy our industry, but he has a voice in Congress when it comes to agriculture. CAFOs, doing away with them. How are we going to feed everyone? Is everyone going to be a vegan? That won't work either. I'd love to know. I'd love to know Booker's side of the story on that. This video right here is essentially just a great example of biting the hand that feeds you. These folks that are tearing agriculture down, the folks that are putting out misinformation about our industry, I think it'd be great for them to go hungry. I think it would be great for them to realize what farmers and ranchers do for them day in and day out. The fact that, they, that we go out in the heat of the summer, the cold of the winter, um, no matter what, to take care of our animals, to make sure that we are producing a wholesome product for here, for um, everyone here in America and those around the world. I had very little respect for the New York Times before this uh, bit of content came out. All too often, I think they are incredibly misinformed and very biased. But after this video uh, comes out, it just it is the icing on the cake. It shows their ignorance, uh, the lack of uh, credible sources in this video. It shows that um, they just have no idea what's going on in agriculture. And it shows what their, uh, their agenda is at the end of the day. Drovers has reported that on Tuesday, it was announced that JBS will pay $52.5 million to so-called direct purchasers who accuse the meat giant of conspiring to limit supply in the U.S. beef market in order to inflate prices, excuse me, infl yes, inflate prices and boost profits. In a statement, JBS said it did not admit liability, but that settling was in the company's best interest. So they still claim that they did nothing wrong. The statement also said that JBS will defend against beef price fixing claims by other plaintiffs. Other defendants in the case, of course, are National Beef, Cargill, and Tyson, the big four. That's who's in it. In the lawsuit, direct purchasers accused the defendants, the big four, of conspiring since 2015 to reduce slaughter volumes, which created a shortfall that smaller companies could not make up. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope you all have a tremendous Thursday. I'll catch you later.